Hello and welcome to this edition of DermTube Journal Club. My name is Nancy Samolaitis and I'm your host today. We're here with Manjula Jagasathi and we're talking about innovations in cosmetic dermatology. Welcome, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Nancy. So I understand that you've developed a new technique for expedited tattoo removal. Tell us about how you do that and how effective it is. Um, you know, everyone's pretty much familiar now with the R20 method where we actually use multiple passes and some practices. I like to use perfluorodecalin solution in between to eliminate the white spotting that the tattoo the laser causes. Um, but what I'm doing now is with each pass, I'm varying the spot size of the laser treatment and even the wavelength and the jewel settings. That way I'm getting the tattoo at several different depths where the tattoo artist might have actually placed the ink. And also, I'm kind of getting different sort of uh, color, even minor gradations. All of it is really lending to a much better overall result where I can reduce the number of, of uh, treatments a person needs by 60% sometimes. And can this be done with any tattoo removal laser? Yes, any tattoo removal laser that has multiple wavelengths. So if it's Q-switched, such as some of the new picosecond Q-switches and some of the new nanosecond ones even I know have multiple wavelengths. And then obviously if they have different spot sizes as well, it can be done with any of them. So it's highly interchangeable. So you're also well known for your modern techniques with eyelid rejuvenation. Tell me about some of those. Um, being, being from the East Indian subcontinent, um, I know that uh, under eye circles were sort of the bane of my existence. Um, you know, they were sort of the first thing that really I felt aged me. And so I've always been really at the forefront of trying to fix them. And I have a lot of dark skin patients in Miami as well. And so that tends to be the first thing that really ages women. And it's something that starts occurring even in your late 20s. Um, so, you know, the progression is first you try to use really good retinol cream. And it's hard to even find a retinol cream that is non irritating in the eye area. So I start with that. Then we might do some light chemical peels that are non irritating in the eye area. But what I'm finding to be really, really, you know, the, the best thing, and it's changed my practice in terms of under eye circle rejuvenation and even tightening is to treat with the Fraxel laser very early in someone's life. Like we're talking as, as soon as they start seeing circles and the creams aren't working. So age 30, 31, 32, they can get away with like one treatment a year. And I do a very, very light setting so that it's very superficial. That skin is very thin. You don't need to go deep with high, high jewels. So a typical setting might be 15 uh, and a density of maybe six or seven and just two passes and you will see the lightening of the under eye circle immediately when you do the treatment and that's when you know you're in the right place for each individual person. Are you combining those resurfacing modalities with fillers and other injectables in that area? If the person is hollow and that sort of the way the light hits the under eye is what's causing the problem, then yes, I will do filler. A lot of the younger patients don't even need it. They just need this, this area resurfaced and collagen to grow and to sort of cover the underlying blood vessels. And just the new collagen is of a lighter texture and color than the old collagen. And that's all a lot of them need in the beginning and then as they get older they might need more things like tightening laser with radio frequency and or filler. Uh, and what do you do to prevent post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation in these people? Um, I, because my settings are so low, I'm not having any risk of that. But um, one thing I did want to say is I do firmly believe in the 24 hours after doing Fraxel laser for any f face area, but especially the eyelids, is to do really good uh, post-skin care. So I always use a very good retinol, a very good vitamin C. You've created this golden opportunity with channels in the skin so that the skin care can penetrate for that 24 hours and that really helps my results and then I don't get any issues with any sort of pigmentation. If they're very red I might include a cortisone, a topical cortisone cream into that regimen so they're doing three or four things uh, you know that evening, the morning after and the, and the night after that and that's it, 24 hours they're healed. 
Uh, speaking of skincare, what are some of your favorite new formulations in the cosmeceutical market? Um, I really am liking My Body Skincare's products. Um, they have um, kind of user friendly names that pa patients tend to remember. And then uh, their retinol is one of my favorites because it's one of the few I've ever been able to use in my eye area. Uh, it's called A Team, and it has a high percent a retinol, but it's still fairly non irritating. They have a probiotic acne cleanser. As we all know, the whole concept concept of acne resistance, uh, antibiotic resistance in acne is so prevalent now. So using a probiotic perhaps to balance the microflora of the skin, I think is a very good idea. So I like that cleanser as well. And then their vitamin C has good studies for penetration. So I like that product too. Well, thank you so much for all your innovations and cutting edge advice. Thank and you. thanks for joining us today. And thank you for joining us for this edition of DermTube Journal Club. We'll see you next time.